Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. This is Evangelist Taylor Fish from Silsby, Texas. And what an honor it is to come to you via technology. Uh, I'd like to give honor to your pastor and to your leaders for the opportunity to speak to you today. And before we get into the word, I would like to pray over every viewer and every listener that's tuned in and joining us today. I believe that the Lord is gonna touch somebody through this video. Wherever you are, whether it be a church, uh, whether, a, whether it be a classroom or a living room, I uh, ask that for a moment that you would just close your eyes, you would lift your hands and you would make wherever you are a sanctuary and we're going to pray here for a moment. Let's lift our hands and do that. God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. You see every person that's watching. You see every viewer. God, you see every uh, every preacher, every young person, God, every church that's tuned in tonight. God, I pray, God, that you would reach, that you would teach, that you would touch, and that you would draw Every person, God, that's viewing tonight, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name, amen. Again, what an honor it is to be here with you. I will begin uh, in the 32nd chapter of the book of Genesis. If you'll turn there, if you have your Bibles, Genesis 32, and I will start with verse number 22 and read a few verses here. Uh, Genesis 22, or Genesis 32 and 22, it says, and he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two woman servants and his 11 sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him unto the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. And he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except Thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. My subject for you tonight will be simply this. All by myself. All by Myself, David said in Psalm 65 and 4, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. He said, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee. There are many things that could cause us to approach the Lord. We all can remember a time where uh, we felt the drawing. You felt the drawing from the Spirit of the Lord that said it's time to pray. We can all look back and, and remember that time that the Lord shook us, woke us up maybe early in the morning and began to beckon us just in recent days. Just in recent days here, the Lord has done uh, just that thing to me, woke me up, shook me in the middle of the night, and early morning, draw, drawing me to prayer. Sometimes God stirs us that way. Sometimes it's a feeling. Sometimes it's a shaking. Sometimes it's a voice. So it, it, there's a lot of different things that God uses to get our attention. Sometimes God uses his voice and uh, sometimes God uses his presence to draw us and we'll feel, we'll feel the Lord's presence begin to pull us to that place of prayer. Sometimes God uses other things that causes us 
to pursue him. Sometimes it's trouble. Sometimes it's sickness. Sometimes it's hardship. And sometimes it's loneliness. If I could go back and preach myself a lesson today. That I didn't have to spend years learning it. I would preach about loneliness. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and calls and causest to approach unto thee. God uses a lot of things, but one of the greatest tools that God uses for us to approach him is that tool called loneliness. It is that tool, that feeling. I know what it's like to stand, know what it's like to stand in a room of 500 people and feel like nobody knows me or nobody understands me. Nobody can relate. Nobody knows what's going on in my life. You may have felt that before. You know what it feels like to be overlooked. You know what it feels like to, uh, you know what it feels like to maybe feel like nobody knows where you're at at the moment. But I'll tell you, it's at them times that I've learned to recognize. It's at them times I've learned to recognize when I feel that nobody understands, nobody's there and the phone's not ring, ringing and the text messages aren't coming and the, uh, there's no one else pursuing me. It's at these moments that I, I've learned to recognize that God is calling me away. God is calling me to a place of prayer. He is trying to get my attention and trying to cause me to approach him. It's at these, it's like that, it's like a, a, a life raft that God throws out to us only. It's not so much a life raft, but it's something wrapped up, called, uh, wrapped up in a package called uh, loneliness. I come to tell somebody, I come to tell somebody today that anyone that is ever going to do anything in the kingdom of God is going to have lonely moments. Everybody that's going to do anything in the kingdom of God are going to have moments where God sets you aside, where God calls you to get alone with him. Oh, there's going to be moments that you feel like you're, you're, you're misunderstood. There's going to be moments where that void, no matter what you reach out to, cannot be filled. And there's somebody that's watching this video. There's somebody that's watching this video right now that you feel that in your spirit. I want to tell you what you are feeling is a beckoning. You are feeling the beckoning and the call of God. God is beckoning someone to a place of prayer. God is beckoning someone to a place where you will get alone. He is calling you to an all by myself moment. He is calling you to an all by myself moment. Anybody that's ever going to do anything for God, you're going to have them all by myself moment. So what you're feeling right now is it's not just loneliness and it's not just hardship and it's not just things that's came up in your life but what you are feeling uh, is quite literally the very thing that is going to set you up for power God is wanting to anoint somebody but he's going to anoint the ones that will get all by themselves uh, I don't know about you but I want to I want to take advantage uh, of them all by myself moments uh, his name was Adam and he was placed in a garden and at the beginning he was yes all by himself it was the first relationship between God and man it was the very first man that was speaking to God and, and it was the very first man that God was speaking to oh but the Bible says that God spoke to him and God said man is not good alone so what did he do he needed a helpmate he, need, he needed a help me he needed someone to be with him someone to bring 
comfort. And the Bible says that God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. And at that moment, God and man all by themselves in a garden. Nobody else there. God said, Adam, if I can get you to quit messing with the trees, if I can get you to quit tending to the animals, if I can get you to quit doing everything else and get still for a moment and get alone with me, then I'm going to reach into your life and I'm going to do something for you. Hear me today, Adam. Adam was all by himself and God reached in and brought out what was already on the inside of him. Oh, his name was Noah and his God moment was not in front of a thousand people, but his God moment was at an altar alone when he found grace in the eyes of God. When God was about to wipe humanity off the face of the earth. Oh, there was a man that was willing to say, I don't care who else is not praying. I don't care when any, what anybody else is doing, but I am willing to get all by myself. His name was Abraham and he stood before God on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah and talked God down from complete judgment to looking for ten righteous souls. He did it all by himself. The Bible said that Abraham yet stood before the Lord meaning he was not worried about the verdict. He was not worried about the angel angels that were walking out to bring destruction. He said, I have confidence if I can get alone with the Lord that I can change the mind of God. It was it was an all by myself moment that caused the judgment of God to hold back, be held back and held at bay for a season. It was an all by myself moment that caused the, a face of God that was turned away from his people to turn back and look for just ten righteous souls. What about it, Joseph? Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a dream all by himself. He was he was the only brother there that had this kind of dream. He had a dream by himself. He was cast into a pit by himself. He was sold into slavery by himself. And he would be a, he would eventually be put second in command and save the entire world. And he did it because he learned how to take advantage of them all by myself moments. Hey, Moses, Moses had a burning bush experience on the backside of a desert, but it would never happen in Egypt. It would never happen in the courts of Pharaoh. It would never Never happened when servants were around him, but it would happen when God would drive him into the wilderness and drive him to the backside of a desert. It was here that God spoke to him and said, go before the most powerful man in the world, Pharaoh, and cry, let my people go. He was all by himself. At Exodus 3, 2 through 4, in this experience in Moses' experience, Experience. It says, and the angel of the of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire and out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. It was a supernatural thing. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here am I. Oh, something happened in Moses' world. Something happened though he was leading Jethro's flock and he had plenty of sheep to look after. 
Something happened the moment that Moses said, I will now turn aside. I'm going to turn aside from everything else. For a moment, I'm going to get my mind off of responsibility. For a moment, I'm going to get my mind off of everything else because there is something that God is wanting to do here. There is something that God is wanting to say here. And the Bible said that Moses turned aside. He said, I will now turn aside. And the beauty of this says that the Lord saw him when he turned aside. And God did not speak until he turned aside. Oh, I want to tell you there's something that happens when you get in them all by yourself moments and you say, God, I'm going to I'm going to put everything else on hold for a minute. I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to get all the distractions out the way because there's something that you're wanting to say to me. There's somebody right now that's listening to this, that's watching this video. Oh, you felt you felt the tug. You feel the beckoning. There's a God that's trying to get your attention. He's calling you to an all by myself moment. Gideon was found behind his father's wine press. Gideon was spoken to by, by God. He was spoken to by God when he was all by himself. He said, I'm going to make you a mighty man of valor. He was alone. He was alone. David would tell King Saul and his mighty men that he wasn't afraid to go out on a battlefield and fight Goliath. Why? Because he had already killed a lion and he had already killed a bear. We would have never have known. We would have never have known of them private victories in David's life. Oh, until he was asked to explain them. We would have never known them. There was no one else there to write. There was nobody else there to record the battle. But the only way that we know is because David was would testify. I was all by myself. I was out in the flock and here came, here came a lion and here came a bear. And the Lord helped me for the, to, to defeat and have a victory. Oh, no wonder David could step out on a battlefield. No wonder David could step out on a battlefield all by himself. Oh, with the rest of Israel standing behind him. Why? Because he knew I've already been alone. I've already been by myself with God. And God has helped me before. I want to tell you, if you can take care of the private battle and you'll get alone with God, if you can take care of the private battles, the Lord will give you victory in the public battle. Something happens when you get alone with God. God's calling somebody to an all by myself moment. Daniel learned to pray three times a day despite the king's decree and would then be cast into a lion's den. Oh, he prayed all by himself, but he's the only man in history that would see angels walk into a lion's den and close, close the mouths of lions. Why? Because when you get by yourself and you get and you get alone and you take advantage of the all by myself moments, God, God allows that to set you up to see what nobody else will see. Oh, I want to see the miraculous. I want to see the supernatural. I want to be a part. I want to be a part of the miraculous. How does it happen? There's got to be a Daniel that'll get along with God and say, God, I don't, I'm not worried about what comes against me. I'm not worried about the king's decree. All I know is that there is a beckoning to the window and nobody is at the window but me and you, Lord. You are calling me. You are reaching me. God is calling somebody to an all by myself moment. Hey, Esther. Esther walked into the king's court and found favor with the king, saving an entire 
her nation. Oh, you got it. She did it all by herself. Nobody else walked in there with her. I wonder who it is that is willing to go before the king all by yourself. Maybe you've never built a prayer closet before. Maybe you've never made that prayer closet and prayed in that prayer closet until it became the throne room. But I'll tell you, Esther, if you'll go, if you'll go where nobody else will go, if you'll go by yourself when nobody else is there, oh, you'll get favor with the king and you can save the people. Oh, Jonah would find himself alone in the belly of the whale, but it was there that he made the commitments oh, that would re-empower him to reach a lost nation called Nineveh. The Bible said for three days, for three days and three nights, oh, we see that Jonah sits there, sits there in the belly of the whale. Oh, but in Jonah 2, chapter number 1, the Bible said then Jonah prayed unto the Lord. It took him three days. It took him three days to cry out to the Lord. But when he realized God is trying to get my attention. Oh, I want to tell somebody that's watching this right now. Oh, there's a reason that things are happening in your life like they are. There's a reason that you feel a drawing. There's a reason that you feel alone. It isn't because no one likes you and it isn't because no one loves you. But it's because God has is trying to put you in a place to, to get your attention. Come on, Jonah. I'll cause an entire nation to repent. Come on, Jonah, if I can just get your attention. Jonah, if I can just wake you up, if I can just shake you up, I'm going to use you to cause an entire nation. I'm going to anoint your words and cause an entire nation to repent. Come on, Jarius. What about it, Jarius? The Bible says that a multitude of people meet Jesus at the seashore. The Bible says that Jarius fell at the feet of Jesus in front of a standing multitude and said, God, I need a miracle. He separated himself uh, by being the only one uh, that would come out from among the crowd. Uh, it was an all by uh, myself moment. Jarius uh, was the only one that is named there uh, in that scripture text. Uh, he's the only one that's called by name. Uh, just him uh, and Jesus. Uh, I want to tell you, sometimes you've got to get out from among the crowd. Uh, sometimes you've got to press your way in. It's called an all by myself moment. Zacchaeus climbed to the top of a tree to get a hold of Jesus. Oh, and Jesus went into his house. Why? Because Zacchaeus was willing to do what nobody else would do. He was willing to climb where nobody else would climb. He was willing to put himself in a position for an all by myself moment. Simon Peter stepped out of the boat in the midst of a storm and walked on water when everybody else stayed in the boat. He was all by himself with Jesus on the water. The only other man other than Christ Jesus himself in the history of the world to walk on water. And then after, and then after denying him three times, Jesus met Simon Peter again while fishing, telling him, feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my lambs. Peter had another all by himself moment. I want to tell you, it's the all by myself moments that makes us. It's the all by myself moments that transforms us. It's the all by myself moments that sets us up just like Simon Peter to be spokesmen of the Pentecostal apostolic message. I want to tell somebody today it was Jesus Christ who was drawn into the wilderness 40 days all by himself standing toe to toe in the greatest temptation that he would ever stand in. Toe to toe with the devil all by himself but the Bible said that the spirit led him into the wilderness. The spirit led him into the desert. He was all by himself but can I tell you when he came out, when he came out of the wilderness he left, not just led by the spirit but he left 
with the power of the Spirit. When you get alone, when you get in them all by myself moments where you're crying out to God, it's there that God anoints and there that God brings power. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and begged for some of his disciples to pray with him only to find them all sleeping. You know, we know that the greatest battle that Jesus is ever going to fight, many of us will say that it was on the cross, but I want to tell you that battle was won in the garden when he was all by himself. The disciples, I believe, I know we've all preached it. We've all preached it. We've all heard it said. Can you just pray with me one hour? The disciples all catch a bad rap for being called asleep. But at the end of the day, to me, this proves that your greatest battles are not caught, are not won, are not fought in groups or masses, crowds of people. But your greatest battles are fought and won alone. John wrote the book of Revelation on the island called Patmos all alone by himself. It's when Revelation began to flow. God's calling somebody. God's beckoning somebody. God's telling somebody to get alone. God's looking for somebody to get alone and get to that place that all by myself moment. I don't know who's watching this, but there's somebody, there's somebody that you feel a drawing. Even as you watch this, you feel a calling, a drawing to that place of prayer. What is it? I've come to tell you what it is. It's the greatest setup you can ever have. It's the greatest setup. God is drawing you. God is calling you. God is trying to set you up for power. It's a verse that I'll read that I, I saw a few, uh, I saw a couple weeks ago and it's in Psalms 27 and 8. David says, when thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Psalm 27 and 8. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. We know, we all know, we all quote. The scripture, Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's a, it's a, it's a scripture that is, it's very much quoted and preached by many, but I want to point out that there, that God, he calls us to do several things here. Number one, he says, the, those that are called by my name, humble themselves. Number two, he said, I want them to pray. And number three, seek my face. I thought it was, I thought it was, it was incredible. And it caused me to dive into the word when I saw that when he said pray and he said, seek my face, he referred to them things as two different acts. I want you to pray and I want you to seek my face. Really, what is the difference between, between praying and seeking his face? We all know what it means to pray. We all know what it means to cry out to God, but to seek his face is something completely different. I bring you back to Psalms 27 and 8 when David said seek my face but only this time I want to read and bring clarity from the amplified version Psalms 27 and 8 the amplified version is when David said when you said seek my face in prayer require my presence as your greatest need my heart said to you your face, O oh Lord, I will seek on the authority of your word. David said, me seeking his face means that I require his presence as my greatest need. Oh, there's a lot of people that's consumed with a lot of fear, a lot of worry, a lot of different things. But I want to tell you our greatest need, our greatest need is still his presence. Our greatest need is still his presence. Oh God, I want to seek you. 
I want to seek you and require your presence as my greatest need. Something happens when you put his presence above everything else and say, God, I just want to seek you. I require your presence as my greatest need. I need your presence more than I need a blessing. I need your presence more than I need a miracle. Because it's in your presence that I find everything else that I need. God's calling somebody to get alone. I remember a time in my ministry where I was trying to find clarity. My wife and I, we were youth pastoring, thriving youth ministry at our home church in Silsby, Texas. We were preaching a full-time evangelism schedule every weekend, and I was still working a full-time job. We were very stretched. And I don't believe I'm talking to anybody that doesn't know what it means to be stretched. You know what it means to be stretched in a lot of different directions. You know what it means to cry out and say, God, what is it that you want me to do? And uh, I, I remember something had to go. Something had to change. I was stretched. I was running on empty. I remember praying upstairs in the balcony of our home church. And I began to pray, God, I need you to speak to me. I remember I began to pray and I said the words, Lord, where is my place? Where do you want me, God? What do you want me to hold on to? What do you want me to let go? Where is my place? The voice of the Lord became very clear to me. And God spoke to me. If God has ever spoke to me at this moment, God spoke to me. And he said, the most neglected place in the kingdom is the secret place. The most neglected place in my kingdom is the secret place. I want to challenge somebody right now. See, the most neglected place in the kingdom is not a platform. It's not a pulpit. It's not a mission field. It's not an instrument. But the most neglected place, the place that God is calling, that is ever calling, ever reaching for us to go, is the secret place. Somebody set up for an all by myself moment. Bible says in Genesis 32 that Jacob wrestled with the angel. But it wasn't until he sent some things over the brook sent some relationships over the brook and said, God, I got to get along with you. We all have the supernatural waiting on us, but we got to be willing to get alone and wrestle alone all by ourselves. I challenge you to lift your hands to the Lord. I close tonight and I want to close with prayer. I want you to lift your hands and lift your voice wherever you are. God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you for your presence. I feel your presence now, God. I pray, God, that you would draw somebody, draw somebody again. There's somebody right now, God, that knows it's time to build an altar. It's someone that there's somebody that's listening that knows it's time, God. It's time to go to the prayer closet. You are beckoning us and you are setting us up for power. In Jesus name, I encourage somebody to lift your hands and lift your voice and respond to the voice of the Lord. Respond to the call of the Lord in Jesus name.